we are going to break a significant national security story in this first hour on TrentoVision.tv and on WNN 1470 in Boca Raton, Florida. An article is being published today. I'm going to read you the title of the article. Yeah, we're good. Yep. We're good on the uh, Skype end? Are we good? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good on Skype. Okay, we're let's bring him in. Ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet uh, uh, John Guandolo. Uh, John, briefly um, uh, give an introduction to the, your, the thesis of your work, and then let's really get into the details. Um, I'm well, as it relates to uh, John Brennan, um, uh, there are a couple things that I think are important to say off the bat. And the first is, uh, you know, my contention is he's wholly unfit for government service in any national security capacity, and <laughs> that would specifically um, make him unfit to be the director of central intelligence uh, for the United States. And they're really, I would break it down into three key areas that make him unfit for duty. The first is uh, he has uh, interwoven his life professionally and personally with individuals that we know are terrorists. And he has given them access to not only senior leaders inside the government, but uh, has given them access to uh, the national security Council, the National Security Staff. He has brought uh, known Hamas uh, and Muslim Brotherhood operatives into those uh, positions of government. Uh, he has overseen and approved and encouraged others to bring known leaders of Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood uh, into the government in positions to advise the U.S. government on counterterrorism strategy as well as the overall quote unquote war on terror. That's just the first part. Uh, the, the second part, I would say, is he has proven through his own comments uh, publicly that he is clueless and, and grossly ignorant of al-Qaeda's strategy. Now, Mr. Brennan himself says that al-Qaeda is the enemy, which uh, those folks who are, are uh, have read or are aware of my work and, and Tom, the, the work we did with Team B2 report know that that's not the total threat. But the first thing is Mr. Brennan believes the threat is just al-Qaeda, which is problematic. And number two, even when he discusses al-Qaeda, he does not know what he's talking about. So he's ignorant of that enemy, their strategy, and how they operate. And then third and finally, uh, which some would say is, is most disturbing, is uh, um Mr. Brennan uh, did convert uh, to Islam when he served in an official capacity uh, on behalf of the United States and Saudi Arabia. And, and that fact alone is not what is most disturbing and makes him unfit for duty. What makes him unfit for duty was his conversion to Islam was the culmination of a counterintelligence operation against him to recruit him. And the fact that foreign intelligence service operatives recruited Mr. Brennan when he was in a very sensitive and senior U.S. government position in a foreign country means that he is either a traitor, which is which I'm not saying, but that's one of the options, and he did this all willingly and knowingly, or he did it unwillingly which and unwittingly, which means he is naive and does not understand, he has the inability to discern and, and understand how to walk in those kind of environments, right. which makes him completely unfit to be the director of central intelligence. Man. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, John, 888-565-1470, if anybody oh wants to, to get in. John, um, if I understand you correctly, you just said, and, and I know you qualified it with... with the uh, the conversion to Islam back in Saudi Arabia, uh, I guess in the 80s or 90s. We'll we'll get into all of that. We want to dissect mm -hmm. this thing. Um, isn't isn't the main reason? You know, he happens to be a Muslim. But are you kidding me? The head of the CIA is a Muslim. I mean, for real. That is that's correct. Okay. Yes. Now, 
Um, we can talk about that as you would like. Well, can, can I ask a question? And, 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 yeah, let me now. Uh, you, you mentioned Team B two, um, and that's nineteen of us, and, and uh, yeah, we're both privileged to be part of the amazing group of national security experts. Um, and I mean, did did you run this by anybody? I mean, are you sure of of uh, of what you're saying out there? Because None of us feel like being waterboarded or or audited or you know anything crazy like that. Um, we got enough problems, but if we're going to be saying definitively, and and you, and you know, I mean, the other side is going to say, "Show me the evidence, show me the evidence, show me the evidence." Um, you're comfortable in your analysis, your research. Yes, I am. It's not really uh, research. This is my, uh, the, the facts of the matter are confirmed by U.S. Uh, government officials who were also in Saudi Arabia at the time that um, uh, John Brennan was serving there and have direct knowledge. These are men who work in very trusted positions. Uh, they were direct witnesses to uh, his uh, growing relationship with the, the individuals who worked with the Saudi government and others. And uh, they witnessed his uh, uh, the conversion, his uh, his conversion to Islam. Uh, now, as you know, um, it, this shouldn't that that in and of itself again shouldn't be shocking to people because Mr. Brennan has made public statements. As a matter of fact, there's an article that was done by Jihad Watch uh, that, that came out, I believe, yesterday, but it may have been a couple of days ago, um, where Mr. B- Brennan. I mean, they had the clip for. Mr. Brennan specifically says during a public address, which, by the way, this this speech he was given was sponsored by the Islamic Society of North America, which is, excuse me, the leading Muslim Brotherhood entity in North America and a Hamas support entity, Hamas being the terrorist organization. And um, um, so he said during that speech that, uh, he, is, he has learned and, and gets his understanding and his worldview uh, in large part to us from Islam. But for more than three decades, I have also had the tremendous fortune to travel the world. And as part of that experience, to learn about the goodness and beauty of Islam. As a college student in the 1970s, I spent a summer traveling through Indonesia, taking in the wonderful landscape, culture, and people of Java and Bali. Despite my long hair, my earring, and my obvious American appearance, I was welcomed throughout that country in a way that is a reflection of the tremendous warmth of Islamic cultures and societies. Like the President during his childhood years in Jakarta, I came to see Islam, not how it is often misrepresented, but for what it is how it is practiced every day by well over a billion Muslims worldwide, a faith of peace and tolerance and great diversity. So uh, it, it shouldn't be a large leap to imagine that he's converted to Islam. And again, I don't think that is, although I think to a lot of your listeners that would be big and shocking news, I think the news is that that conversion was the culmination of the work of people in Saudi Arabia who work for the Saudi government. And that makes John Brennan just uh, naive, uh, foolish, dangerously ignorant, and uh, and totally unfit for this position. 